What's up guys, welcome back to Newswave. Next week is a holiday week, of course, with Christmas, like right in the middle of the week. So we'll, next week will be kind of interesting with Newswave and everything. I, it's not gonna be every day next week because, well, Christmas we probably won't have Newswave because I would have had worked on it on Christmas Eve. And to be honest, there probably won't be a ton of news around that time, but we'll still have Newswave Monday, Tuesday, and we'll see about Thursday and Friday. But you'll still see videos here in the morning. I'll still have some stuff ready for you guys to check out, much like I did last Last year, so there'll still be some stuff to uh, to watch here. But today, though, we, we still have a bunch of stuff to go over because the Xbox Series X has an interesting side effect, one that I didn't even think of until a very talented person on Twitter started making a bunch of mock-ups for the Series X for some, uh, some game ideas going forward. So we'll talk a bit about uh, that also, Google Stadia made a pretty big move yesterday that uh, that actually is a, a good plan going forward, and I'd like to see them do more of those. We'll talk about that. And Nintendo, well, they're they're trying some new things it seems with some of their their marketing. So all of that and more today, guys. As always, if you enjoy these videos, make sure the like button. You guys have been helping out a ton with with the uh, amount of likes you've been dropping on the video, so I do appreciate that. And make sure you guys are subscribed down below so you can stay up to date on the gaming news going on in the gaming world. And we're going to start today with the Steam Winter Sale. It's going on now very quickly. Uh, there's a lot of stuff to check out. They have a ton of games on sale. I mean, my my phone uh, with the Steam app was going off saying, hey, the, the game on your on your wish list is on sale. It's ready to go. Go check it out. Uh, but there are some, uh, some small ones as well, like Republic Commando is like $3.50 right now. That's one I would check out. But of course, you have some bigger ones like Sekiro. Sekiro is, is uh, what, 35% off, and that was our game of the year at the awards show. So it's, it's a pretty good one to check out there. But you also have Monster Hunter World and a bunch of other games on sale as well. But go check it out. That will run until January 2nd, which is plenty of time for us to just stack games in our backlog as usual with the Steam sales. Also, Square Enix announced that Dragon Quest XI has now passed five and a half million copies shipped, and that is great for that franchise. Now, a lot of those copies, of course, moved in uh, Japan. It was very, very big launch there, of course, on the PS4, the 3DS, and now we have it for the Switch with Dragon Quest XI S, but I do see Nintendo and Square's push in the West with their marketing recently with Dragon Quest XI S. Remember with that very long demo as well that is a great great marketing tool. I think mo more companies should do longer tutorial or longer, I would say longer uh, demos for games that are that long that even have the tutorial thrown in there so you get that out of the way. But that was a really cool idea. Demos that carry over that are that long. Of course, your game also has to be as long as Dragon Quest XI, which is very long, but really cool to see this series still continuing on, still very, very strong. And it just makes us uh, look forward to the next Dragon Quest game in the future. Oh, and we did get our game Games with gold for the Xbox One announced. You can see them here, and we have four of them to go over here. We have Sticks, which that actually is the sequel, I believe, to Sticks. I didn't get too into that. It's a stealth game. I know Evan played the first one a bit. Maybe the sequel. He'll let me know possibly on the podcast this weekend. I'll ask him about that. Uh, but Sticks will be part of Games with Gold going free on the 1st of January with your Xbox Live Gold subscription. Then we also have Batman the Telltale, Telltale series, which is good. That is, that is a really good game to check out, especially if you like the story-driven games. Then you have Tekken 6 from the Xbox 360, and then Star Wars 2, the original trilogy, and that is, of course, another 360 game. So we have two Xbox One games, two 360 games that work through backwards compatibility. And I look at this nice say, yeah, it's all right. It's it's not amazing. There's no heavy hitter. I would argue that what we've seen recently with like a Titanfall 2, for example, in the PlayStation 4 was better, despite it still being a pretty cheap game. These are just like, oh, they're just okay, I guess. I, that's all I can really say for, for what they've announced here. But it's January, I assume, as we get closer and closer to E3, you'll see some of the heavy hitters. And especially as we get towards the end of the Xbox One life, you'll probably see some bigger games get added to games with gold as we go forward. Also, I'm really excited for Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. That is uh, January 17th next month, I believe, that's coming out. And they put out the opening cinematic. And <laughs> Wow, it it looks good. Like I've been I've been excited for it because it it seems at least they're trying to do something a little different than what they've been doing with Dragon Ball Z. And yes, they are still telling same story, but they're doing a lot more to flesh out parts of the story. Uh, they're adding in some interesting uh, uh, parts from filler episodes where they learn to drive. And it looks like they're having a lot of fun and kind of giving fans what they want with this game. And I want to see how the RPG elements kind of tie into it. But the opening cinematic that they showed looks. Amazing, like it looks so good. They have the music and everything. Like it looks 
amazing and I cannot wait for this game. But if you have not checked it out, I would I would go watch it and see what you think because it did hit me kind of in the in the nostalgia bone there. And guys, some of the quick news out of the way, let's get into the bigger stuff. Let's start with this Xbox Series X. Can I just call it Xbox? And then if we if we have multiples, I'll just say, oh, the Series X. I, I'll just say Xbox Series X from now on until we get another SKU announced, which could happen close to E3. But one interesting bit about the Xbox Series X, of course, is its form factor. A lot of us, I mean, it's become a great meme online, but the form factor apparently seems to work really well with themed consoles. Now, the, this isn't new to us, right? You can buy all kinds of themed consoles from any of these companies, any of the big three, Sony, Nintendo, Microsoft, they all make them. Like Sony, of course, has had the God of War PlayStation 4. We've seen the Death Stranding one pretty recently. I have the Spider-Man PlayStation 4 Pro. Uh, and Microsoft just did their Glacier Gears of War 5 uh, system. And then we, of course, have seen Nintendo do things with Pokemon immediately when the Switch Lite came out with their Pokemon theme Switch Lite. So to consider Microsoft doing themed Xbox Series X systems probably isn't much of a stretch, but we didn't really, I guess, at least I didn't picture it as much until we saw images like this. Check this out. This is from uh, the Twitter user Xbox Pope, and they just went off. They just started doing a ton of mock-ups for these, and th this is amazing. Now, now, Xbox Pope does say they designed for famous brands around the world, and I, I believe them after seeing some of these. This is crazy. They showed a, a Sea of Thieves setup. They showed a Minecraft setup. Uh, they showed Cyberpunk, which was minimalistic, yes, but I think it was very, very well done there, and it also is gonna depend on how they change maybe the light at the top, if it's not RGB, if they change it to match the system itself. And they also had a Halo Infinite uh, setup. And what was really interesting was Phil Spencer comes in and says, one thing we really like about the design is the ability to do limited edition, uh, LE editions, wraps, custom, etc. It wasn't a design criteria that was all about the function of the console, of course, but the result leaves a, a nice forward face for some creative opportunities. That's the thing that kind of, that, that kind of caught me off guard here. I, I didn't even realize this. When you set the system up, the, the actual face that is looking at you from the system is pretty wide, right? We've said it's a thick system, right? But it's wide in that they can put all kinds of cool things on the front of that system. Consider when you buy a PlayStation 4 Pro or an Xbox One X, even a Switch because the design would maybe be on the back with the front maybe having a different color scheme you don't really see it. Like you don't look at it. You don't really show it off because with the PS4 Pro or the Xbox One X, you'll usually uh, sit it down flat. Or if you stand it up, you always have that disc drive slot facing you. Very rarely have I ever seen anyone just kind of turn it so that you're looking at technically the top of the system, I guess. But the Xbox Series X does that by default. It has, of course, the widest base, so it can display all of these cool, these cool images, these graphics, these almost murals at times based on what this person is doing. It's really cool stuff. I would go over to their, their Twitter account. I'll leave it down below and just check some of these out because you can check out some of the high uh, resolution images that they have and it looks super professional. Of course, these are mock-ups and we don't really know if what Microsoft will do first. If I had to take a guess, I think it'd be very, very smart. I know it would be pretty close to launch, but I think it'd be smart to do something Halo, like some kind of tie-in with Halo. Forza will of course be out around launch as well. Maybe do something there. And I, I don't necessarily mind if we have a limited edition system so close to launch because we just had one with Nintendo and their Switch Lite. There's gonna be a difference in pricing, obviously, but there are gonna be a lot of Halo diehards or even Forza diehards that will probably buy that and the regular X, uh, Series X as well. But now, now I wanna see what designs Microsoft can come up with because this system seems like it's set up perfectly for any type of limited edition system. Let me know what you guys think about this little almost side effect because Phil Spencer said it wasn't really designed for that, but you know what? It, it, it could work. Next up, let's talk about Respawn and Jedi Fallen Order, a game that I really, really liked this past year. Awesome game. It's a shame it didn't really qualify for the Game Awards because not everyone had played it, but I beat that thing in a couple of sittings. I couldn't stop playing it and I'm still going back to it, but I do think Respawn needs to add in the ability to transport between meditation areas after you've beaten the game because they want you to backtrack, of course, during the main campaign when you're playing through it. But afterwards, when you're trying to 100% everything, anyway, anyway, yeah, add in the, the teleporting between meditation areas. Anyway, it looks like they could be hiring for a sequel. Now, of course, the game's done well. It's sold well. We saw it in the NPD charts, topping, uh, charting in the top two, and it's looking like 
EA won't be able to downplay the success of this game, which is great because that means that, yeah, a sequel makes sense pretty much all the way around. So it looks like it's been spotted that Respawn is actually hiring. So right now there are three postings for a senior character artist, a level designer and senior software engineer. It's just to reveal that Respawn's Star Wars team is working on a third person action adventure game, which, huh, I wonder what third person action adventure game the Star Wars team would be working on. Hopefully it's the sequel to Jedi Fallen Order. We don't know for sure, but it would be great if they also had a little more time with the sequel so it doesn't come out as buggy as it was. It was kind of buggy. It felt rushed from a technical standpoint, but as they've been patching it, which they have, it has become a bit smoother. And I think we're to the point now where it's also going on sale at a lot of places. Now is the time to pick it up, I think, for Christmas, especially if you if you know the person you're buying for is a Star Wars fan. Absolutely grab it, and uh, they, they won't they won't you won't regret getting them that because it is an awesome game. But I hope we get a sequel. Maybe it's a PS5, Xbox uh, Series X game. I I would love to see what they can do with that after seeing how cool this game was on the Xbox One X. Next up, let's talk about Google Stadia. I've been using Google Stadia for the past month, and I think I'm just about ready to put out a video for that. Like it's been it's been quite a bit of time that I've been playing it, and the good news is since I waited so long, they they have actually been updating it and they've been making some improvements, things that I was going to complain about day one, but they have been patching it up, and we'll talk about that. But they did make a pretty big move, and it's one that I, I've said they've had to do, which is you got to build up your studios, right? They just, they've opened one studio, and, and once I heard that, and this was like right at launch, I said, well, we're not going to see that game for a while. Like, why, why are you just now opening studios? So the quick fix is you buy studios, and that's what they've started to do. At least we have one so far that we know of that they have purchased as the news came out yesterday. So as of Thursday, Google Stadia, or at least Google in general, uh, owns the Montreal-based Typhoon Studios. Now, this studio only has about 26 employees. They could possibly start hiring now that they're owned technically by Google, and maybe they want to ramp up for a bigger project, as they are just about to announce, or release, after announcing this previously, they're about to release Journey to the Savage Planet. That is in late January. Now, what's interesting about this is it's developed for several platforms, so this isn't going to all of a sudden become a Stadia exclusive, unless they pull a fast one and say, oh yeah, it's just on Stadia. Most likely this is a situation that Microsoft ran into with Obsidian, where they still had to release the Outer Worlds on things like the PlayStation 4 because contracts previously were already already signed. I assume that's the same way with Typhoon here, but Google Stadia making a play like this, while it's not a, you know, this big lavish acquisition or anything, they could build this studio up, especially if the game coming out in January is is at least good. They could say, okay, we have some talent here. And most likely, at least that I like to assume, Google scouted out the studio and said, okay, there's something we can work with here and we can build for an, a Stadia exclusive outside of, uh, what, Guilt, I guess is the one Stadia exclusive. That's what they need to work on. Give people a reason to go actually use your service. And with the free to play option launching next year, if you can have some compelling games that people actually want to go play that aren't available anywhere else, you will at least, I think, get people to, to open Chrome and at least buy into your ecosystem that way with 1080p at 60 frames per second. But as of now, I will admit, there's not a real driving force for people to sign up and pay $10 a month for 4K at least not yet. Maybe they'll work on that. Maybe their studio that they opened internally will have something really cool, but that probably won't be for a year or two. And in our last bit of news, well, I mean, it's Friday, so why don't we finish up with something a bit strange, a bit funny? I I, I don't know. This, this is something that Nintendo Australia decided to do. I don't really get it, but I thought it was funny. They decided to do an ASMR video as an advertisement for Labo, specifically the fishing rod. This is the video they put up, and there's not much going on here other than the sound effects of cardboard being put together, but it's like magnified, so it's very loud. And I don't I don't know if cardboard scratching and being put together is I don't know if that's relaxing. I'm really unsure. I was gonna go down to the comments to check, but they disabled the comments, which 
Eh, it might have been a good idea on their part. I, I assume they, they kind of knew what was coming there. I'm not sure. Although I do know that like Nintendo Japan and some other uh, like Square will do it as well on their on their uh, Japanese page. They will generally disable comments. I'm not 100% sure Nintendo Australia is passed with that, but it was really funny to see them post an ASMR video. I, I don't know if that's, is that a thing now? Like is Labo ASMR like a, a something that people can do online and really run with. I I don't think so, just because Labo isn't exactly soothing, but go watch it for yourself. I mean, really watch it. Still have some headphones on and blast the sound and see if, see if that's something that relaxes you because it, it didn't really do it for me. And I, I'm not a big ASMR person, but I have to imagine there are probably better sounds than crinkling and jamming cardboard together. And we'll finish up with the comment of the day as you're seeing here. This is from Michael saying, too bad Spawn Wave can't get the Nintendo PlayStation to tear it down. First of all, that thing is probably worth upwards of, like I said, a million dollars now. So that would be, that would be a very uh, uh, nervous repair to do or just work on. But Ben Heck actually did a phenomenal job. The legend, Ben Heck, opened it up, managed to fix it completely. So it reads D or CDs for what it's worth. I don't know if there's a ton you can do with it there, but it was reading like music CDs that he had. And then also read cartridges and powered on and worked. And then I also saw a comment of uh, someone asking, how do you just find that at Nintendo PlayStation? Well, the story was that the person who found it, who said, who posted on Reddit that they just had that in their attic when people were talking about it, like it wasn't a big deal, said that I guess his dad had bought out a liquidation sale at the time from a game company that I guess worked with Nintendo and Sony around that time, and that was part of it. So they had it, they put it in the attic, and then it wasn't a big deal to him because the, the guy grew up with it. So to him, it was just like, oh, it's a Nintendo PlayStation. Yeah, everyone has those, right? Not necessarily. And now, here we are years later, it's probably gonna sell for about a million dollars at auction. That's that's a pretty amazing stretch of a couple years in, the, in your life. And ladies and gentlemen, what I do here for News Wave. If you enjoyed this video, guys, hit the like button. It really helps out. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about, whether it's the Xbox Series X and the potential for limited editions and kind of this interesting form factor actually lending itself to kind of the, the artistic appeal of I mean, a PC tower? I mean, that it's still pretty cool to have that front face be so large that they can do some really neat things with it. Let me know, I guess, a limited edition that you would like to see, third party or first party, because they get deals either way with different companies to do them. Also, what do you think about this ASMR video that Nintendo posted? I'm, I'm not 100% sure on that, but... Okay, sure. And then what about Google Stadia buying studios as a quick fix to get some exclusives? Which studio, go ahead, I mean, it's Google, it's Google money here, right? Like, they, they have money. What studio do they go get to lock up and make a game exclusively for Stadia that would make you go, well, I guess I gotta, I gotta stream a game here. Thanks guys for watching. Have a great weekend. I'll see you back here Monday morning, 8 a.m. Eastern time for Newswave.